Today we're going to talk about the top five worst commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. I don't understand why they're in the game, and I don't understand why they haven't been buffed. So stick around in this video for an extreme roasting of commanders that make no sense whatsoever, and you should never invest in them. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chisco Gaming, and as you can see, I've collected and tested a lot of commanders in the game. In fact, my commander guides collectively have gotten millions of views. So in this video, I want to talk about the commanders that are just shockingly bad, and I don't understand why they haven't gotten more of a buff to make them more relevant. So this is important for you, in part for the entertainment value, and in part to know that you really should almost never invest in these commanders, although there will be a couple exceptions, and I will explain them. Now, before I get right into the roasting of the top five worst commanders in the game, I want to give a few honorable mentions to commanders that, you know, they hold a role for a short window of time, perhaps, but they don't quite make the top five worst commanders. And a few of these honorable mentions include commanders like Khan. Khan is a commander that is a bit of a glass cannon. He does a lot of damage, but for whatever reason, his kit completely falls off by the time you get to the end game. I think it's because he's really just missing defense and health, and he's just not doing enough for you. Khan is one of those commanders that was amazing when he first came into the game. I mean, he was super, super powerful. But at this point in time, we really kind of expect that an open field commander has four skills relevant in the open field at all times. And Khan is a bit of a weirdo. One of his skills only works when you're over 70% of units remaining. One of his skills only works when you're less than 50% of units remaining, which means there's a weird window in time in which you only have your active skill and your second skill doing literally anything for you at all. So Khan is just a complete weirdo here. I don't know that there's a way to sort of save him based off of this kit, where he's really good if he's over 70% and interesting if he's below 50, but like overall just kind of mediocre, actually. The next commander on the honorable mentions list is going to be your, your boy Ragnar Shaggy Pants. Okay, Ragnar Lodbrok. Now, here's the thing about Ragnar. He is actually relevant if you want to rally with Attila and Ragnar, I tested this. You can do this. He is like a Takeda substitute, but he's also just kind of like worse Julius Caesar. Like when you actually look at his skills and what they do, he's actually just slightly worse than Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar is overall better. And so anytime you would have considered using Ragnar, you'd rather just use Julius Caesar. So he is actually, unfortunately, one of the worst heroes in the game, even though, or at least he's an honorable mention for worst hero in the game, even though like his lore is absolutely incredible, his real world history is incredible, he really doesn't make the cut in Rise of Kingdoms. And the final honorable mention that I want to give you is a commander that early game players, you know, hey, if you're a whale, you invest in him. It's Edward of Woodstock. Brother, when he came out, he was powerful. Edward of Woodstock Esong was actually the jam when he was just released into the game. But now, looking at his active skill requiring 1,350 rage, this is a complete disaster. You want faster rage cycles, not slower rage cycles. And you take a slower rage cycle over here, in order to do only 2,500 damage factor, I know I say only, but these days, you can get more damage factor anyways from commanders that just, they're just better. They just do more damage. Uh, if I go to Tarek Ibn Ziyad, we look at his active skill, okay? He's gonna do, he, he does 2,500 damage factor, bro. And he gets more damage if, if he's surrounded. So like, dude, Edward of Woodstock is so completely outclassed. It's actually tragic and the only thing you end up using him for is his skills as auxiliary skills where you put one skill onto another commander in certain end game kvk formats um edward of woodstock is honestly a bit of a tragedy i would love to see him actually be relevant and the way that you would make edward of woodstock relevant again is with a really killer museum buff that becomes available in kvk i think season three and also 
uh, by adding another commander that is an archer commander that wants you to basically not use your active skill very frequently. But this is still against the meta for everything else you're trying to do in the game. Um, and enemies can just walk away from you before you use your active skill. I'm sorry, Edward of Woodstock. Yeah, look, Banana Helmet is the name I've given him, and he is a dud, man. GG. I wish I could get the sculptures back. But let's get on to the actual... Top five, in my opinion, these are the worst commanders in the game. These are commanders that hold little to no value at all at almost any time in the game, or their value drops so fast, it's just disappointing. The number one, actually, well, let's start with number five. The number five commander on this list is going to be Lubu. And you might have seen this coming. Lubu is a weird one. It was a Dynasty Warriors 9 collaboration event, and... I think they wanted to add a commander that was viable in the early game, but that means that he's actually kind of terrible in the late game. And I think there must be some sort of agreement in play where they can't modify him or make him more relevant or change what he's doing because he's basically stayed 100% the same and been 100% irrelevant. And the only time he was briefly relevant is because he had a very high defense reduction and defense reductions from active skills do not stack. So whichever defense reduction is the highest is going to be the one that's going to apply. Well, now we have better defense reductions from a better commander, that's Nevsky. So his effect here is largely irrelevant. His damage factor is laughable at 800 damage factor. This is just a complete joke. The rest of his kit is fairly mediocre, and he gets synergy with Diao Chan, who is an epic also not actually available anymore because this collaboration has ended and and i think there will be no way to ever get lubu ever again and i think it should stay that way that or he should be buffed and be made available again but i don't think they can do that so i think lubu goes into the history books as unfortunately being an absolute titan in so many games but a true dud in rise of kingdoms you should never put any sculptures into him as a leadership conquering and skill commander. I mean, those trees are fine, but his skills are just not good enough. At number four on the list, this commander was originally the KVK season one reward, and it's Charlemagne, baby. And I just don't get what role he's supposed to fill in the game. I feel like the intention was really cool. Hey, what if we made a commander that actually is badass at just purely rallying cities? And the problem is that I think they tried to make him so overtuned for rallying cities, but not make him overpowered that it turns out he's like not actually good at anything. He's not even the best for rallying cities, uh, which is where you'd be really hyped to take 10% less dead troops, right? And he's also not relevant at all in the field. The only thing he's relevant for is his second skill. While on the map, troops led by this commander have a 10% chance to gain a shield when attacked. This is actually pretty legit if you get it as a bastion or auxiliary skill in endgame KVKs. But otherwise, Charlemagne really is an unimportant commander, which in some ways is not a bad thing because it means that if you don't unlock him and you don't have him and you don't work on him, it doesn't matter. And it's actually in some ways good when there are commanders like that in the game because it means you can focus on the few that are actually the best of the best and let other people <laughs> put their sculptures into Charlemagne. I have jokingly spun the wheel for him for memes. These days it feels a little expensive to be spinning the wheel for Charlemagne, so I've kind of stopped doing that at this point. Charlemagne, number four on the list. Let's get to number three on the list, which is unfortunately a commander that I did max on one of my accounts. And this won't be too surprising to some of you. It's going to be Moctezuma. Let me tell you, I had like a 5511 Minamoto with double C. And I had it on my farm. And I thought, what if I max Moctezuma on my farm for rallying barb forts? Surely I can get better battle reports and have less troops in the hospital. Let I save resources, right? Because I get less sev wounds when I rally barb forts. I improved my Barb Fort Rally, I kid you not, by one Sev wound by going from a 5 5, like 1 1 Minamoto to using Moctezuma Primary, fully expertised. It was a disaster, an unbelievable disaster. So I have maxed Moctezuma, and I know firsthand just how bad he can be. And although the effect on his active skill, reducing the counterattack damage uh, dealt by the enemy by 15%, is a Big debuff. That's a big deal. That is so good if you're swarming stuff, man. 
the rest of his kit just does not cut it. It really does not cut it. I thought originally he might be useful in multi-rallies. I thought he might be useful for swarming things as a really technical play, and it's just not the case. He does do big damage to barbarians, um, and he does this interesting thing where he actually heals when the enemy has a health reduction. And so there's like this weird synergy with like using the legendary accessory, the dagger, and getting a bunch of heals. But I have tested with this and played with this extensively to try to make Moctezuma work, and I've found no way to do it ever. Uh, so unfortunately, Moctezuma is one of those commanders that although his kit looks really interesting, he's just not good enough. And I feel like if you added another 1,000 damage factor, literally, to this commander, maybe, then, maybe, but probably not, we could have a conversation about, could you use him? And even then, probably not. So the fact that I'm saying you could add 1,000 damage factor to make it 2,400 damage factor on his active skill, and he still wouldn't be good enough? Yeah, I mean, Moctezuma will go down in history as being a, one of the worst commanders in the game, and I don't think he's savable, unfortunately. From here, we can go to the number two commander on the list. Some people will say this is a questionable choice, because there is a window of time where Hannibal Barca is actually relevant. But if you've been tuning in to my armament opening shenanigans, you know that I actually call him Hannibal Barfka, because, well... This is where I put all of my siege armaments that are absolutely disgusting, and I cry and complain about my life, where I have over 34%, actually, I have 34.9% of stats, oh my god, all for siege, wow, can you imagine if I'd actually rolled, like, troop types that I cared about, that is so disheartening, oh, the armament system. So, look, Hannibal Barfka, or Barka, he's actually really good at, like, KVK1, where if you max him and you have him, you'd use him. But he drops off in power levels so fast, I can't actually believe that you're supposed to get to high levels of VIP to use him. Because by the time most people get to high levels of VIP and they're like, hey, do I buy Hannibal Barka? It's like, no, he's actually irrelevant now. And it's confusing to me why, like... A commander that you kind of like want players to buy would be so bad, but like here we are. He's a he's terrible. Um, now again, if you're like super early on, there's actually a lot of value to these VIP crates. Even if you don't want Hannibal Barca, I'll point out that like the books of the Covenant are actually really good for the money that you spend if you're rushing T fives. So like yeah, whales should definitely be going for this, and they should still get Hannibal Barca. But you've got to understand that like. His kit is actually just not good enough, and very, very quickly, you will have no use for him at all. And, and there's just so many reasons why that's the case. Um, if we look at his skills over here, he's only doing 400 damage factor. Like, like hello? His debuff would have to be so god tier to pull that off. And okay, reducing your damage dealt by 25% and your defense by 25%, that ain't bad. But that sure ain't good enough. <laughs> that is really not good enough. Okay. So Hannibal Barca, complete miss here. But this brings us to the number one worst commander of all time in Rise of Kingdoms. And I really had to think about this one. Because I was like, who is truly so miserable that there's just no path to redemption? And that's Suleiman. I don't know what the heck was going on with this commander. But he was added to the game from the Mightiest Governor which you would expect to be like a really good commander, like the meta for rallying, the meta for garrisoning, whatever it is. Now, he's a rally leader, so he should be the meta for rallying, right? And he was just terrible. And, and like, we couldn't figure out what the heck to do with him other than, like, jokingly run a siege rally. And the crazy thing is that he actually has really good skills. Like, this second skill is such a good skill for bastions and auxiliary skills and late kvks making it so that you get 15 percent attack 15 percent defense and reduce your damage taken by all sources by 10 percent when you're outside of alliance territory yo that's good but overall he just completely missed the mark 1300 damage factor isn't enough um and if your target has less than 50 percent rage you reduce their defense and their health and it's just like it's it's so lackluster, it's actually shocking. Again, this is a commander where 
you could put another 1,000 damage factor onto them, and they still would not be the meta in Rise of Kingdoms, which is, that is insane, okay? If you made this 2,600 damage factor, then and only then, you, you literally double the active skill damage, maybe we could have a conversation about Suleiman's relevance in the game. And, and that's how you know he's just really far off from where he needs to be. Now, he also has a 10% chance of his attacks reducing the normal attack of the target, which is actually a really, really, really good debuff, okay? And reducing their skill damage. This is a amazing, amazing debuff, okay? 20% normal attack damage reduction and 20% skill damage reduction. But this is like giving me Moctezuma vibes, right? Where like the debuff's really good, but it's just not enough to get the job done, okay? The fourth skill over here, troops led by this commander deal extra normal attack damage. If you have at least two troop types present, you also get a skill damage boost um, for three seconds when you suffer skill damage. That's really good. 50% more skill damage after you take skill damage is a very interesting ability. Uh, and the expertise skill here, when the commander has over 70% rage, your normal attacks uh, inflict additional skill damage to the target, 200 factor, but they grant the target 50 rage. Oh my God. I mean, like, where is that good? It's good if you're swarming a garrison and they're at the rage cap anyways, so granting them rage doesn't do anything. Overall, Suleiman is just a complete mystery. And to the people that maxed him out, I'm sorry, especially the ones who went and tried to test to see if he was good. That is such a freaking yikes. I, I, I Look, I can't, I can't believe, I can't believe that we got a commander that is irrelevant. And, and the thing is that when irrelevant commanders come into the game, great news, everybody, you can skip them. It's just hard to know which commanders are going to be irrelevant and which ones are actually legit. You may recall a lot of people felt like Trajan was skippable, like irrelevant as a commander. I think he also landed at the same time as Solomon. I think they're partners, right? I could be wrong about that, but it doesn't really matter. The, the point is that Oh, it was Moctezuma. Actually, I think it was Moctezuma who, who was irrelevant. It doesn't matter who his pair was. The point is that it's hard to identify when a commander is actually going to be irrelevant and when he's actually an all-star. And Trajan, as it turns out, is an all-star in a lot of contexts. So hopefully this list helps you out. If you were considering investing in one of the eight commanders we talked about today, and I'll review those very briefly, Suleiman, Barca, Moctezuma, Charlemagne, Lubu, Khan, Ragnar, or Edward of Woodstock, you should probably just put those investments somewhere else. Again, the only one I think you can get away with in the early game is Hannibal Barca. And even if you don't need his sculptures, the money on the crates for what you get in them if you're a whale ends up actually being worth it as long as you still are working your way toward T5. Of course, by the time you get to VIP 14, so many people already like are well on their way, or maybe don't need these books of the covenant. I don't know, man. The, the mismatch there confuses me. If you enjoyed the video, do me a huge favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. I've got some awesome stuff cooked up, but if you wanna see what the actual best commanders are in the game, I'll have a card in the end screen for the best investments right now in Rise of Kingdoms. Alternatively, if you wanna see the absolutely hilarious video where Moctezuma gets me one additional sev wound in the battle report, card will be in the end screen for that in just a second.